Hello everybody, this is Troy, and in this video we're going to continue our series on building a twisty puzzle in Blender. And in this uh, episode we're going to talk about tolerances between the parts. And what I mean by that is uh, if you were to print this puzzle out the way it is right now, uh, it would turn very badly. Uh, all these pieces are, are touching, and when you, you print something uh, mechanical like this you need to have some small gaps between all the parts so that you get a smooth turning puzzle. Now depending on your 3D printing method uh, that gap can change so this is a, a good time to save your file to something unique uh, so that if you do change this number and you need to change it back later you can kinda return to this file. Uh, what I often do right now is I'll just select everything and um, I will um, duplicate it and then uh, move it to a different layer. Uh, so I've got a backup copy here. I've got this and I've got my backup copy on this layer here. Uh, and I know I haven't really covered layers but I would like to just move on on this. Uh, I'll make a supplemental video showing you how to how to move objects to different layers. Uh, most of the gaps you're going to be using are going to be somewhere between say 0.1 for a service like Shapeways uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe millimeters up to uh, maybe 0.5 for a typical home 3D printer. Uh, for this tutorial I'm going to be using 0.4 as a gap uh, which is what I found works well for my printer and so let's get going. So what I can do right away is I can just select the part uh, with the core here. Now the center of this is set right here in the center so I can very easily just scale this uh, and it's going to scale around that center so this will work just fine. So this measurement here, the 8 and the 8 uh, are the ones that I want to diminish uh, by 0.4. It's going to be 0.2 on each side uh, because of the way the scaling will work. So all I need to do is I can just type in the math here, minus 0.4, and I can actually just do minus 0.4. Now I could just type in 7.6, but uh, I like to just do it consistently uh, this way. Uh, I don't trust my own math sometimes. So, uh, <clears throat> For the green uh, edge piece, I can see that it's just a little bit thicker. Again, we're in the center here, so going in this green Y direction, uh, we can very easily just, just do this to 7.6. Uh, go minus 0.4, like that. Now, I don't have the advantage to do that with the others because they will shrink from this point, so they'll come in from out here, not moving these edges. So what I need to do for these is I'm going to select uh, tab mode, uh, hit tab, which will put me in edit mode, and select this face. And I can see I want to move it along X here. So I just want to move it 0.2, so I'm going to hit G, and then X, and then I want to do 0.2, and I see it actually moved out. I actually want to move it in, so I'm going to hit the minus key, and that will move it the right way. And that one is done, and then I also want to do the same here. And so I want to move this one up, so it's in the Z direction here. So I'm going to hit G, Z, and then 0.2, and I see that it moved up, so we're fine with that one. Uh, now that piece is done, and we need to just finally do this piece here. And on this one I need to move, uh, again, using the face modes, I'm going to select this face, move in Y, 0.2, so G, Y, 0.2, wrong way hit minus and here I'm going to hit G Z point two that was the correct way and finally uh, it, it is this one right here we want to go G X point two minus and there we have it so now I have built my gaps um, for all these internal pieces with the exception of right up here. Uh, now what we want is we want to have this green piece up just a little bit so the blue can slide underneath it and we also need to do this down here uh, with the yellow. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to take our initial circle cut and we're going to actually make a copy of that. Shift D and I'm just going to right click and now this one, uh, I just want to scale it up for right now. Let's not worry about these numbers at the moment. And I'm going to select this green piece. 
and what I want to do is remove the cut that's on there right now and then we're going to use the eyedropper to select our new piece and then we're going to do the same on the center piece we're going to delete that one we're going to go to our new uh, our new piece so now I've got a much bigger gap and I want to set this one to be a certain size and so we want this to be um, I'm just going to make this 45 I like a nice even number and so then this one our bigger one I want to be 45.4 45.4 and 45.4 so what we've done there now and this is very small to see but you can see right here we've built this little gap uh, in there and that's that's all we need and now this gap continues under so the the green inner piece is no longer connected to this outer piece uh, we'll deal with that in a little bit but that is um, how that part works so to continue on we've now got all of the gaps inside where we want let's build some Florian cuts in here which is going to make the puzzle turn better uh, if you happen to move pieces and they jam up against a 90 degree angle uh, they can kind of stick but if we if we round all these corners <clears throat> everything uh, will turn much better so let's start with our center and uh, because we've done some scaling to everything uh, I want to do to make sure that everything is scaled so here we've got some odd scaling so let's hit uh, control a uh, apply scale this one's fine this one's fine this one's got some scaling we're gonna hit control a apply scale control a apply scale and those are set so now that our scale is applied let's select our center piece and go into edit mode and what I want to do is select these four edges here and we're going to bevel those with control B and I want a fairly large value here I'm going to go with four I think um, so I'm going to hit four and then I'm going to use my mouse wheel to drag in some sections and I'm going to go to um, eight I'm, I'm looking for a number that gives me a nice rounding without being too high and we are dealing with fairly small pieces here so uh, the facets won't show up on the 3d print and then when I go out of edit mode I can see I've got a nice rounding there and I think that amount looks good uh, so let's go to the next piece here and we're going to do the same we're going to select in this case we want this edge and this edge and then uh, we also want to do this way and this way the way the puzzle are going to is going to be and so let's go control B and we will go again four and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to dial in uh, eight segments again and then when I go out to edit mode I can see how that piece is looking and then let's do the outer pieces here we're going to do the same thing along this piece, this edge this edge and this edge so I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select those three and I'm going to hit control B and we're going to do four and I'm going to dial in eight segments and there you go we are starting to uh, get a little bit nicer look here on our puzzle now I've got a little bit of time here so I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, also on the inner segments here um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select them and I'm going to select uh, this piece and this piece and uh, these edges and I'm going to select also right here and I want to control B now on the inner pieces I don't want to go as far as four I'm going to dial in some segments here uh, I think a value is maybe I'm looking down at the bottom of my screen and I see a value of two I, I think that's probably a good value so I'm going to type that in and then I'm going to exit that and yeah I think that'll work fine and I'm going to go to these edges and I'm going to select these and I'm going to hit control B two and let's dial in uh, some segments and then on our internal piece here I want to select uh, again these three edges here so I'm going to select this one 
this one and this one and we're going to go control B we're going to do 2 and I'm going to dial in 8 segments again and then when I exit out we can see we've got some nice rounding on our pieces and that's going to allow the puzzle to work much better along with the tolerance gap. Uh, that's enough for this video and we will um, proceed with the next video. Thank you.